Sias Turks, Sias Turks, Sias Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. I'm your host, Dave Chacho, and with me is uh, your other host, Robert Chan. Hi. And joining us today is our new guest for the week. I, look, I see the look in your eyes. The look on your face is the look I get on my face when I'm trying not to do something. In this case, mispronounce our guest's name because it's in my head now that everybody mispronounces it. So I'm thinking like, don't, don't screw it up. Does it, do it I probably, think I can do this. Don't do it the other way. I've prepared myself mentally, but now you're getting in my head about it. Yeah, so see? Let's see? see? Our guest is a comedy writer and a performer that you have seen in such shows as Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. Yay. He's also been on Community and Parks and Rec. His name is Ben Zelovansky. Welcome. Oh, hi. Hey, Dave. Did I get hey, that right? How are you guys? Yes, it is Ben. Yes. <laughs> I know there's a lot of pressure. I'm, all the way over here, I was like, don't say Neb. Don't say Neb. <laughs> I know. Well, I had to change it because everybody... Uh, everybody you know, said, it's actually my birth name is Neb. Neb. But, uh, wow. Zevolansky. I was born on that Mixelplicked planet. <laughs> <laughs> so every time they said it, you just kept getting sent yeah, back I got sent back to the alternate dimension. <laughs> yeah. Got to be a hassle, so I just changed it. Understandable. Great. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what, were, you, you. were you waiting for something from me? I was. Should I be dropping truth bombs? Is, is that what? Uh, it's a little early for that, maybe. I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> but then, I mean, you and I understand the rhythms of a podcast. Yeah, or a normal uh, human conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not Whereas, easy for everyone. No, no, no. No, you, you can, it's a, <laughs> you can learn I it. should just be comfortable with it. the large, uncomfortable lulls. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best kind. You realize the more pauses there are the more pauses you have to edit out afterwards right so, that's okay. right i just want to say that there's uh, nothing worse than a podcast with a lot of pauses and you know the funny thing is i'm going to edit out that pause <laughs> so that, that when this no airs sense. the joke will just not make any sense <laughs> that's all right i'm used to it <laughs> let's do some science let's you thought trying to woo one sex was complicated. Try seven. Chacha here with Chan and Ben Zelvansky. There are you suggesting there are seven sexes which I must? If you were one of these bacterium, se- tetra hymeni. Oh, well, the- hymen- seriously, <laughs> oh, right, seriously, now, come on. Tetra hymena. What's the real name? Thermophila, which means seven hymens. <laughs> then you feel them how? Uh, it says tetra hymen, so that would be four hymens. Four hymens. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's. I know Latin. Come on. <laughs> you can't pull wool over my eyes. Or his hymen. Um, no, or my hymen. <laughs> This is a bacterium that has seven genders. Yeah, buddy. Wow. And each of the seven can mate with any of the other six. That is messed but, up. Wait. But as God says in the Bible... God the made Adam and Eve, Tetra not Hymen. Adam and Steve and Terrence and Charlene. God, God made Tetra Let's go. Oh, not, no. All seven. You can't stop. <laughs> uh, Nicolette. That's five. And, four? Uh, five? Maggie and, and Tom. Uh, Oh, yeah. That's the bit. There we go. Yeah. (laughs) Woo. Moving on. Bit accomplished. (laughs) Yes, you can have sex with any of the other six, but not with your own. That makes sense. Hmm. And so this is a pretty interesting little uh, genetic anomaly that uh, up until recently, they kind of didn't know how it works because like... They've known about this thing for a while. They just haven't figured out how to do it. If and... Wait a minute. uh, Are you saying... Are you you suggesting that scientists are confused by sexual interaction? Yes. That's a far-fetched... I'm going to go ahead and... baffled by I'm going to let them have this because it is tough enough even for a person who has lots of sex, thank you very much. Like some of us, some like, of us who ooh. make science podcasts who, who don't necessarily talking? do. Who are you talking about? Two oh, no. is bad enough. To nope. have seven? No, I would allow. And I would allow Chuck Woolery to be baffled by <laughs> the mysteries. Uh, of how seven complicated would your sex? OK Cupid profile have to be? I'm, oh, I'm interested geez. in the Talias <laughs> and the Maggies. Totally not interested in the. Uh, I don't remember any of the other names. Uh, Me neither. Of the right. six sexes. <laughs> we'll go back and get them later. So now it's not a now a seahorse. Is uh, is a uh, has both genders? Is that correct? Do we, is right. There, so so there are a lot of hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites. Okay. Um, right. Okay. But that's two. And, so you know, now, there what are the are like other... corals that have only one gender and they reproduce by budding. So we we know of one gender. We know of two genders. 
And we know of hermaphrodites. We know about the trisexuals. They'll try anything. We'll try anything. High five, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let me load my rim shot up. Stand by. Hold on. So the this is a bacterium, you said? Yes. So now it doesn't have sex with itself. It's a single amongst cell. the genders. It, but two of them, they have sex. Two of them have sex. They don't need seven to have sex. Just two of them have sex, and they just have to be different genders. Okay. I'm curious. So there's 21 different combinations of sexual orientation you could be. Yeah. Natural born swinger. Their LGBT (laughs) community is really complicated. (laughs) They just gave up. (laughs) LGBT, UV, W, X, Y, (laughs) Z. And so just recently they figured out like how this works because they're exchanging DNA, but how do two genders make the gender of the offspring? Yeah, that makes sense mm. because if yeah, if there's two two people like basically donate each donate half of their genes. So <clears throat> how do you when there's seven different things, do they like how do they interlock? Well, so they you, just you, figured out. So these uh, things have two different nuclei. One is the nucleus that expresses the genes. That's the one everybody has. But right. then they have another nucleus that doesn't express any genes. It just holds the genes of all seven genders in it whoa so and then when they get it on (laughs) nice they exchange the nucleus they exchange material from the nucleus that holds all seven genders and it randomly just kind of it's like they throw it into a big pot and cook it for a second and whichever is the first they gender just, they throw their genes at the wall and whatever <laughs> sticks is what whatever makes sticks the is the the gender of the baby and the gender of a baby so like if uh the the parents are genders a and b the baby could end up gender e or d or c anything oh, like it's just madness. random wow. like splat i'll say this it, it's, something comes out it sounds like pretty uh passionate sex if they're throwing their genes at the wall Oh, yeah. I've been there, right, guys? I, I couldn't even find my jeans once. <laughs> I, had to, I had to switch to slacks. <laughs> Do they know how that is beneficial to them? Because, obviously, sex is good because you're taking two gene pools and mixing them. And, you know, in most instances, you're going to get the best of the stronger, both. Right, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, d- does seven create a much stronger gene line, or is it. Uh, so you think it the, just, it does, the happen? does the strongest of the seven win out? Like, if one, one is. It sounds one like is it's okay, randomly selected. Two is better. Is seven, like, the best? I don't know. The answer to the question is I don't know <laughs> if it's better. It doesn't say if it's. I don't know what the point of having seven genders. I'm is. sorry, just you don't know confusing. what the point of having wild sex with six. I don't other know what the point of, of having any genders is. Well, like, how frankly, wild is bacteria sex? There could be bacteria all around us right now as we yes. speak having sex on these chairs. Having they could be having wild sex orgies. Orgies. Probably the most sex that's happened in this apartment <laughs> since we started this podcast. So in other words, once the podcast started, there was a drop off. <laughs> Things were going great. And then this, uh, this really cooled everything off. Science Girl, podcasts girls, have a way of doing that. Yeah. That is exactly correct, except for the things were going great part. <laughs> ben, yes. I would like you to meet my daddy and my mommy. And my mommy. For I have three parents! Oh. Uh, <laughs> Certainly a pleasure to meet them. Chan here with Chacho and uh, guest Ben Zelovansky. So uh, it's always very uncomfortable when you introduce us to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's 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 known as a chimera. It's uh, based on the old mythological creature, uh, which had yeah, the, the tail uh, of a snake. The old Merv Griffin. The, the <laughs> yes, Merv Griffin had a tail. <laughs> Merv Griffin he had, he had a tail was, of a snake. Was part uh, lion, part uh, eagle, and part. Uh, but all Griffin. Snake. What's the hind yeah. shape? What's the? the I, I believe. Oh, I believe it hind. is. Yeah, I believe the tail snake, uh, body lion, head dragon. Possibly eagle, eagle, something like that. Mm. I think a hippogriff is actually the one with the head of the eagle. A griffin is a mythical creature with the head and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. A hippogriff is a magical creature with the body of a horse and the wings and head of an eagle. A chimera is a fire-breathing monster with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail. But at any rate, uh, that was a you know like a, an old thing that was just like a conflation of uh, animals, and so they call these things chimeras now, where they have um, organisms with multiple parentage. 
Um, I mean, the term chimera, I think, just means blend of organisms. Yeah. But it, it's also, re- there's a thing where twins in utero, where one will absorb the other one. Mm. And so the resulting person is a chimera because it has like two sets of genes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like one of those uh, Schwarzenegger DeVito deals. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah. I saw if, a, a if documentary DeVito, about this. <laughs> if DeVito lived inside of Schwarzenegger well, and they ruled the uh, state. <laughs> I like to think that together. Danny DeVito lives inside us all. <laughs> what, what's going on here is three parent babies. What they are doing is uh, there are mitochondrial diseases. I'm when, in favor as long as it's two moms and not two dads. Right. <laughs> This has almost nothing to do at all with pornography. Um, I'll say about that. <laughs> not <laughs> yet. There's not. So a parent that has mitochondrial DNA will pass along, you know, a, can pass along a host of terrible birth defects to a baby. What they're doing, because the mitochondria, uh, if you'll remember, is the powerhouse of the cell. And it is essentially, it, it sort of it's, evolved as we evolved as creatures before, we, you know, as single-celled organisms. There was a cell and there was another cell. And, uh, you know, one of these cells eventually got absorbed by the other cell and it it would make energy for the larger cell so it ended up just becoming one unit and eventually in all of our cells now we have a nucleus and we have a mitochondria and the the mitochondria problem, was actually a separate organism yeah i mean that's that's a chimera in itself right i mean well i mean it was uh however many uh, uh hundreds uh, of millions hundred billions million years, years ago, ago. Well, i think that's what billions. we're talking about it, it yeah. sort of evolved to become part of us right. f- from an outside organism uh, so so it's, essentially it's it's almost like there are separate separate units and what will happen sometimes is a person will have bad mitochondria and they might pass it along to their child so what has happened the uh just won't the, can't stay out of jail Those, no this is a cellular it's jail a bad egg <laughs> bad mitochondria uh the uk's human fertilization and embryology authority wow they're the ones who are making uh decisions about this sort of thing they, they are the authority after all they are it's they're, right there on the name <laughs> can't get away from it. They're recommending uh, the we be allowed to, or the UK be allowed to start experimenting with humans on this technique, where essentially they pull the nucleus out of the mother, and they put it in to the egg of another mother who doesn't have that mitochondria problem. Yeah, so you got nucleus over here, got mitochondria over here. Take the nucleus. From uh, the unhealthy mom. For, uh, for the listeners at home, the visual of this is that there are two hands. Uh huh. So it's when he's more like over here, here, make a circle. He's making yeah, two fists, fists chance, okay, and he's go. very graphically <laughs> thrusting <laughs> them <laughs> together. Yeah. Trust me, it, it's a lot clearer when you can see the fist. <laughs> well, I drew a little picture so that I would, could remind myself because oh. I was getting confused. I was like, wait a minute, what part are we pulling out? That is <laughs> this part. <laughs> They've already done this with um, macaques, with little uh, monkeys. monkeys. Yes. And they actually tested it on human eggs. They uh, did it on 65 of them, and about and half of them threw survived. Them away. <laughs> well, yeah. you No, you have to throw them away because it's illegal to do this sort mm. of thing. Oh, um, really? And actually plant, implant them? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what they did is they, they did it. They pulled out the, uh, the nucleus, and they put it in the other one, and they actually got it to form the blastocysts. Which uh, we know from an earlier episode, a quiz question that we completely fucked up. Uh, a blastocyst is what forms after the egg gets fertilized mm. and starts to form cells, divide into cells. So it got about 100 cells in and they're like, okay, cool. It also, uh, one, blastocyst, blastocyst, one of the coolest <laughs> science terms. Oh, yeah. 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 Blastocyst. It sounds we all like. all came a, from blastocysts. Yeah. But it sounds like a video game villain or a. I used to spend hours at the arcade playing blastocyst. Old oh, blastocyst <laughs> nuke <Nukem. laughs> <laughs> at, at one point, we all became. Uh, we uh, grew from embryos into Koopas, as, as well. <laughs> That's known. right. Well, if you eat enough mushrooms, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have uh, mom and dad, and mm-hmm. then other mom who. So, a genetically flawed mom. Yeah, right. dad. Mm-hmm. So now we're taking the nucleus from only the nucleus, leaving behind the the flawed genetic material, right. and the mother. Mm-hmm. We're now uh, the same, maybe the same way. You would implant an egg into a surrogate Similar, mother. Yeah, yeah. Only we're, except just we're just a portion of the egg, so not even the whole the thing. child. Right. Then the the mother who's the egg donor doesn't have any genetic. Uh, she does. Her- she does hereditary. some, but not a lot. Uh, the nucleus has about uh, twenty thousand. Uh, genes in it, mm-hmm. and the um, the donor mitochondria, the healthy mom over there, is only donating about thirty seven. So thirty seven to oh. twenty thousand is negligible. So most of uh, the informa- genetic information is in the nucleus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, okay. So, so now, if you were to just take in a, f- a whole egg from the uh, the mother with the genetic uh, flaws, mm-hmm. 
this would that would you would still have the same problem. It's right, not right. A, okay, so it occurs it's in, at eight. It's inside the egg, uh, but uh, not necessarily inside the nucleus, or very little wow. of it. I, I believe uh, you need about sixty percent of that bad DNA bad for it to uh, translate over. Okay, and when they pop it out, they're usually getting about two percent. Uh-huh. So there's still yeah. dicky dicky so bit, but one of the problems that they're talked about is when you pop the nucleus out a little bit of the bad mitochondria like sticks to it yeah it goes along for the and, ride and like generations down the road that may be a problem well you know what they say you can't make a genetically healthy baby without breaking a few eggs <laughs> this is they do say that this is and it's it's, it's, it's it a say. bit of an old wives tale for a long time a lot of people have said that it's you know <laughs> it's held through a true as true in the middle ages uh, you know sure. in, uh, in uh, homeric times as it does now you know, that when you're doing in vitro fertilization, obviously. Yeah, you know. I think I first saw it on a placemat somewhere. Sure. Well, that is fascinating. I mean, uh, my initial reaction uh, would be to maybe suggest adoption. <laughs> Can't I'd... we just stop these uh, mitochondrial freaks from reproducing? <laughs> Round them up and... Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Yeah. What Na- could go wrong? <laughs> Put them in some sort of camps or something. <laughs> here's the thing. Nature but... usually does it for us. Because oh, that's, that's the point, is that these mitochondrial defects cause terrible, terrible birth defects. And, yeah, and so often, it's... We're uh, sp- that, that we're sp- those are, uh, are supposed to be weeded out of the gene pool. Right. Right. Unless we defy God and <laughs> oh. do, and fix things ourselves. All right. So let's all, all I guess let's defy God. Do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Three hands Three, up. Uh, right. Unanimous. That, I mean, that is kind of the uh, the concern is that, well, if we're starting to do that, then it's just a real short step to like, well, how about we can also choose the sex of our baby? Once yeah. We get to that point, And then how about we mm-hmm. just decide to like make our babies whiter? Mm. Or how about we, you know, make them Hands taller or tall, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think if uh, I'm just glad that I was not born at a time where it was possible to make a handsomer baby because I don't think I would be. <laughs> no, you would not be. I would. I, no, I, none I, of us. I, would I wish my parents there, would have had the choice of a handsomer baby. What are you talking here's about? The thing. Yeah. There would be no science podcasts in the world <laughs> if that technology yeah. were available. The handsomer society gets, it's going to hurt the science podcast industry. Yeah. For, for the good it. of humanity, I think that we can do away with science podcasts as long as everybody's good looking. As long as everybody's well now. Really like, what what about does it work uh, the other way around? In other words, if we really want society to grow and develop and and progress, um, should we make babies uglier? I'm all for it. I mean, if we can if we can produce a race of uh, undateable human beings, <laughs> just think about how much time we'd all have to study. I would argue that I would be perfectly willing to date all of those women. <laughs> Have you been to a comedy theater? <laughs> Science and ethnicology. Guys, I got some good news. Oh, yay. I like good Scientifically news. speaking, mm-hmm. we're pretty good people. Yay. <laughs> Morally speaking, reprehensible. I <laughs> just say, I like, like I, I, I don't know what you're basing this on, so I can't really give my uh, uh, I'm unadulterated support to talking you. Talking about a scientific study mm-hmm. that says mm-hmm. scientific studies make you a better person. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, I, I love this because I agree 100% with the findings, but also in that very sentence, <laughs> sow the seeds of your doom. You see the conundrum. <laughs> now, um, what about uh, uh, racking up grant money? Does that does that make you a better person? <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> studies show yeah. that the more money are donated to studies, the better yeah. society is as a result. Oh well, I've got my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> so this these studies, there's uh, a few of them here that the more someone is exposed to science or scientific thinking, the more morally they act. Um, the the first scenario involved describing a non consensual sex uh, story with, involving a guy named John and a woman named Sally, and then oh, they, I heard that one. They, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, dude, John and Sally John walk and into Sally a bar. <laughs> Sally got raped. John, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I've, got, I've got the punchline. And the duck says, <laughs> 12 inch pianist." <laughs> um, <laughs> People were asked to judge John's behavior on a scale from one being totally wrong to 100 being, oh no, 100 being totally wrong to one being completely justified. And based on how much science background the participants had, the more morally wrong they judged this date rape scenario. Wow. And then there were... Well, what, how, what's, how do we judge morally right and wrong? Are you on John's side? Is that a bunch of scientists <laughs> talking... 
Or is that like real God fear and Americans? Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> The thing about morals is that they're different for everybody. I mean, did mm-hmm. God conduct this survey? Yes, yeah, exactly. If not, exactly. Exactly. Can we really believe it? Do we need the scale to be from one to a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't it be from one to two? <laughs> there is only right and wrong. You know, I'm going to say 60. I, that per- the person who says 60 is almost worse than the person that says one. <laughs> Can we use <laughs> fractions? Oh, God, I would hate to be that person, too. Yeah. Just like, oh, God, what do I... 76.38-ish? Oh. <laughs> what is everybody else saying? Because I don't want to be like, <laughs> feel like too <laughs> much of an asshole. Uh, had but... John been drinking before? <laughs> and was Sally she wearing? Yeah, I, I Maybe mean... she was wearing something too revealing. Yeah, that's how it happens. Really? <laughs> I mean, I'm told. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't. And we met. I'm John. <laughs> <laughs> so there was another, uh, some, a couple other experiments where they just put science terms into people's minds by I mean, <laughs> by telepathy. What the no, fuck are you like talking about? By, <laughs> by vocally saying saying them. them? <laughs> so they so you could rephrase that sentence as they said some science they terms said out some loud. Science terms. Science terms were inserted into the ear holes. <laughs> Delicately they, using they, using tools using known as a tongue. <laughs> they drip <Larry>. terms <laughs> directly into <laughs> one's olfactory canals. Oh, wait. They're, what? No. You're smelling they're, words? No, they, they stuff words up their nose? They're spitting become... in their noses is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I was part of this study. <laughs> oh. What's the ear hole called? The ear canal is known as the external auditory meatus. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm going to cut it in later so it sounds like I'm smarter. We we'll insert it into the ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they said words such as logical, hypothesis, laboratory, and realize at home when you're listening to this, you are becoming more moral yep. by me saying these words. You're listening right? to this podcast in general mm. will make you more moral. You're Re- welcome. Reviewing mm-hmm. it on iTunes will make you more moral. <laughs> uh, if donating John, to our- if yeah. John would have only listened to this podcast before yeah. going out with huh? Sally, mm-hmm. uh, he right. would have done those terrible, the terrible horrible, things. Horrible, horrible things. <laughs> In this hypothetical universe that the scientists have created. He yeah. wouldn't have had to find a spot to hide the body. Are we <laughs> discussing the morality of the scientists who came up with this terrible, terrible thing that John did to Sally? I mean, I, I, I don't know what how terrible I wonder, there must be one creepy scientist who volunteered to write the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got this. Oh, guys. this is great. No, don't worry about it. Uh, I got it. Jo- Dr. Wilson, we asked for just a quick scenario. It's gotta yeah. be you gave us 300 pages. It's almost done. Just sit tight. <laughs> So they, they, they honey dripped the words <laughs> into the participants' ears. And the, after hearing the scientific terms, they became more cold and logical, more <laughs> Vulcan even. Their ears got pointier. They were more likely to condemn acts such as non consensual sex as immoral. I wonder if I that like same uh, like creepy this. scientist was, was bummed out by those results. Yeah. He, you know, he's like, oh, come on. Doesn't anybody think this is moral? <laughs> You have to have a strong constitution to listen to these words and still be immoral. Also, is this the only way that they're judging morality is by a girl getting or not getting raped? Yeah. That no. is super creepy, there too. Are there. Wouldn't okay, they, but, but honestly, couldn't one. they have found something that was a little less black and white? Like, wouldn't have been, you know, something like ste- like uh, stealing a loaf of bread to feed your family? Like, wouldn't that have been... <laughs> they have you watch Les Miserables yeah. and, and speak science terms to you while you're watching yeah. it. And then on a scale of thumbs up or thumbs down. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. determine the morality of uh, Jean Valjean. Mm-hmm. Did you like the French pronunciation of that? That was Valjean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the pronunciation so much as your facial expression, as you said. Yeah. And Valjean. This, this, Jean Valjean. This uh, French flag that I'm waving. Also, that that is. Um, I don't know why you <laughs> carry that around with you. I, I just mean, have it for podcasts mostly. <laughs> I, I just appreciated that you put on the striped shirt and the, <laughs> the beret. baguette and the beret. And, and I, I am sitting a on a cigarette. bicycle with a basket. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was another scenario where participants were giving $5. I, where do I sign up for that? <laughs> <I know. laughs> and told, don't rape this woman and you'll get $5. <laughs> <laughs> why are we even bringing this into it? It doesn't Let's make see. sense. How about 10 Let's make it, you know. <laughs> Can you haggle in that situation? Keep, they, they were told they could keep it or give it to a stranger. And they, they could allot part of it to a stranger and part to themselves. And the more 
scientific terms they were exposed to, the more money they would give away to strangers. Wow. So, so it if takes we, socialism. Oh. If we keep <laughs> if we keep pounding this science podcast into people's ears, they will give, give us more us money. money. No, they have to give it to a stranger. Nah, you guys you don't have, know us. You None of you the know us. Aliases. <laughs> I, I'm just going to start reading these words, and you make your pitch. <laughs> Logical. Give us money, 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 Hypothesis. money. Hypothesis. Try Amazon. Click on the link Scientist. on our webpage. <laughs> Must keep Theory. wallet in pocket. <laughs> Must fight science. It's time for a quiz. It's time for it's, it's time, time for, for a quiz. quiz. We are here with special guest Ben Zelovansky, and um, the topic this week: Earth science. Yes, we have topics now. Oh yeah, dude, we're <laughs> we're fancying this we're bitch all up, growed up. <laughs> so uh, wait a minute, I was told there would be no topics. Oh, too late, Ugh. too late. You're in it now. Damn it! What are you gonna do? Run away? <laughs> I don't. I don't locked. see how I could. There's no getting out. <laughs> Question one: What? Is environmental equilibrium A. The natural balance among changes taking place in the environment B. The artificial balance among changes taking place in the environment C. Substances that occur in nature and can be depleted and or lost permanently Or D. The loss of the layer of, on Earth's surface that contains living things I mean, I would have to say A, unless I'm. Uh, I could have zoned out there at the end, but I think A sounded pretty correct to the me. The natural too. balance among changes taking place in the environment. Wouldn't yeah. you think? Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Let's see. Let's, let's, see, see. let's see. The answer is correct. Oh, yay! Humans upset this balance on a large scale with pollution, construction, and so forth, ultimately threatening the continuation of all species on this planet. Mm. That's kind of a downer. Sounds serious. I feel bad now. <laughs> Uh, question two, what is denudation? A, losing soil to grow food and trees to produce oxygen. B, the natural balance among changes taking place in the environment. Oh, yeah, that's I'm going to rule out B. <laughs> C, a program to protect and preserve our natural resources. Or D, the loss of the layer on Earth's surface that contains living things. Uh, what was A? I think it might be A again. A, a I again? think it might be D. Losing soil to grow food and trees to produce oxygen. D, the loss of the layer on Earth's surface that contains living things. Wait, losing soil losing to, soil grow to grow food and trees to produce oxygen, which I think is more like a, a what do you call that? Because it, it, it happens on uh, uh, like er erosion. Erosion, soil erosion, um, yeah. I, I think A because I feel like if you say I feel like that is a uh, denuded is is like for a bear a tree with no leaves I believe yeah but that, I think isn't I've that heard what that D term. is the loss of layer of Earth's surface that contains that I think of more of like a soil that sounds more like erosion to me I am going to go with A because the guest is okay it's in, in, in point of fact the guest is usually wrong on this show <laughs> but I'm going to, as a show of support as a Thank gesture you. because I'm a moral human being clearly obviously. I'm going to go with A. Hypothesis. Because even yeah. if it's wrong, Scientist. I'm being a good human being, yeah. and you're being a dick, Dave. Dave, there's a thing called manners. Oh, correct. And guess who is not <laughs> is correct? correct? Everyone but me. <laughs> is it D? It is, in fact, D. I think yeah. I said, go back and check the table. I think I said D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the loss of the layer on our surface that contains living things, tree soil, insects, etc. Oh, denudation. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. oh. I, I thought you said. Said and not tree, renudation. Tree leaves <laughs> go bye bye. <laughs> uh, question three What causes denudation? A. Polluting the environment. B. Climactic change causes denudation. C. Upsetting the natural balance. D. Erosion causes this naturally, but human activities, glaciation, and volcanic eruptions accelerate it unnaturally. I might like D on that one, too. D sounds good, but also C sounds good. I feel like... So does A. Natural ba upsetting. Dave, your C thoughts on B? <laughs> I don't like B. Okay. No, B is bullshit. Yeah. Climactic, B was climactic change. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that one. No. Upsetting the natural balance is so vague, that could be almost anything. Yeah, yeah. so that's why I feel like, cause like Because I'm D. thinking like clear cutting is a, a form of denudation, I believe, mm -hmm. which could be considered... 
pollution or upsetting the natural balance. Natural balance. No, it's not considered polluting. Okay, well, it's upsetting the natural balance, and it's clearly <laughs> erosion causes this naturally, but human activities. Yeah, I think it's deep. taking a shower causes denudation because you got to take your clothes off, right? Not me. It causes a nudation. What? <laughs> Wait a Correct. minute. Correct. D. I wear a white sheet. Uh, <laughs> is that for religious reasons? Or you, you cut a hole in it and put the shower head through? <laughs> no, he's, he's in the KKK. Anyway, oh, good? okay. <laughs> good. I thought it was something weird. I'm really racist against shower heads. <laughs> Why? Uh, question question uh, uh, four. Why is denudation dangerous? A, the food chain and water cycles are interrupted. B, climactic change will become severe. C, human health will be compromised. D, threatens the continuation of all species on this planet. I mean, isn't the if the food chain is uh, messed up, then doesn't that I'm threaten gonna... the uh, survival of all the species? I'm just going to say uh, there have been uh, I've, I've gone through a bunch of these quizzes and <laughs> most of them have been pretty good. This one is spectacularly poorly worded. <laughs> yeah. And I 100 percent believe in climate change mm-hmm. and I 100 percent believe that human activity is uh, causing some serious problems that we need to deal with. But also I can see how the jackals on the other end are hearing people <laughs> like this talk like. Man, the Earth is <laughs> needs to be protected. Denudation like, is threatening the yeah. co- continuation of all species in the planet. Exactly. Yeah. So I understand. I don't agree, <laughs> but I understand. Now, is this um, this quiz was provided by the Club for Growth, right? Is this <laughs> Grover Norquist's uh, <laughs> environment quiz so. sponsored by the National Review? <laughs> I, Food and water cycles interrupted. Uh, those that yeah. sounds right. I, I think uh, it's A. Threatens if if it's D, Although, then we're probably going to stop the quiz and go on to another one because <laughs> that's a bullshit answer. Yeah, it's pretty broad. Well, it doesn't species. threaten all species on the planet. Well, I mean, technically it does because once if you have no the Chilean tree cutting ox, <laughs> the ch- it, they <laughs> love denudation. Is that the ox that's born with, uh, with two hatchets on its head? <laughs> horns? Wackety, 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 just wiggling his head back and forth, knocking down trees. That, that's the uh, horribly painful it birth for the mother. It eats by cutting too. down trees. <laughs> <laughs> but every ironically it wears pants though <laughs> that is ironic uh, uh, I would say a the food chain yeah I mean saying it cycle. threatens every you know like there's different levels of threat too obviously yeah. I mean uh, and that's climactic a pretty change is gonna it's, that's awesome although climactic change does happen from like I think that's you know how the fertile crescent turned into a desert and right. Easter mm-hmm. Island turned into a, a treeless plain. Uh, All right, right we're let's say go with a. yeah, food. And water Correct. Oh, yay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Last question, uh, number five. A physics question. Wow. What a poorly what? organized quiz. <laughs> we always like to do four-fifths of a quiz on <laughs> one topic, and then do a U-turn. Yeah, you got to keep it uh, fresh. What is the SI standard unit of electrical charge? A, the farad. B, the Einstein. C, the Coulomb. Or D, the Newton. Uh, Newton is force. Mm. Einstein is bullshit. Probably not a thing. Well, he was a guy, Einstein. He was a thing. Do you guys know that? That's what I mean. He was <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, yo. Einstein is do? a guy. He's, uh, he's a super fucking Dave. idiot. <laughs> super Dave Osborne. That's right. Uh, Bob Einstein. The Farad. I mean, uh, Faraday did... Uh, uh, I think it right. might be the Farad. Also but a character on Lost. Coulomb. That's Farad. my contribution to this discussion. <laughs> this is a thing, too. <laughs> that, so it's a unit of time travel, is what you're saying. That's right. Uh, but the Coulomb sounds really strong. Coulomb? Coulomb is a thing, and so is Farad. I don't remember what they are. They both have to do with electricity. This is suggesting that an Einstein is an is a unit of measurement. There, it ought to be. It yeah. ought to be a, the, instead of like it uh, kilotons. It should be Einsteins. Einsteins. Yeah, that thing is like fifty fifty thousand Einsteins of explosion. <laughs> It That'd should be, cool. be a measure of how tall your hair is. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, or how far you can stick your tongue out in a poster mm. on a college dorm wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you say, Farad? I'm, I'm leaning what does it read Farad, the question again? I'm leaning towards Coulomb. What is the SI standard unit of electrical charge? 
Like and um, obviously, we all know what SI stands for, but for the people listening in who might not know, that I'm of course s- is Sports I'm gonna, Illustrated. I'm gonna, yes, the, sport, <laughs> <laughs> the swimsuit <laughs> issue of. Uh, mm. Oh, no, we're getting somewhere. Popular science says we're kind of we split on with, didn't they, on. What do you think? I haven't the thought. I I would be more likely to go with Farad. Farad. I'm going Farad. I'm going to say Coulomb. Let's see what Farad. Farad. Incorrect. With the answer is Coulomb. Oh, the answer is Coulomb. I think that's what I said. Oh. <laughs> I think we'll go back and review the tape. We'll find out. Chad, <laughs> new one for once. <laughs> uh, so we got three out of five, which is not the greatest, but we're still doing okay. It's a yeah, man. Score. It's next, a, uh, that's sixty percent. That's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> uh, next, uh, next episode, we'll uh, we'll make up for it. We'll make up for it. We'll be fine, presumably, because I won't we'll be five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. You're coming back three days from oh, now no. when we uh, record this again. I have to stay until I get a perfect score. <laughs> <laughs> Singularity Watch. Haven't done this in a while. The singularity is coming. Eventually, we'll all be chewed up and used as uh, battery mulch for robots. And uh, oh, please, yeah. post humans, <laughs> come save us from our own selves. Uh, we're keeping tabs on it on the show. We uh, we uh, watch out when scientists do dumb things with robots. And uh, isn't the whole point one. of having a robot to do something dumb with it? Well, no, no, no. it's when the scientists do something that is clearly dangerous like the robot that could uh uh fling chunks of cinder block that we had like a few weeks back and there's just this video of this abominable like horse looking robot that had a clamp at the end of its head that would just reach down pick up a cinder block and do like this little dance and like it winds up and it just, <laughs> just whip it in the cinder block like 40 well, feet like oh that's terrifying you know i don't like that takes jobs away from americans who would fling cinder blocks right that takes job <laughs> away from american horse beasts with claws for hands exactly <laughs> where are, what are those people supposed oh, to do that was my only skill fling <laughs> cinder blocks what am i supposed now to do with my head robot claw? doing it <laughs> now we're teaching robots how to swarm Oh um, you know those there's been a lot of videos going around lately of like those quadcopters that will uh do search and rescue and that sort of thing um and, and murder they're people teaching, in their sleep they murder them it's that happens more often than you might think. Are those the only two things that they're, they're good for? <laughs> Search and rescue or murder. There's Whoa, a switch on yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think the label's on upside down. <laughs> I found uh, these people. You want me to murder them? No, no, no. Just rescue them. <laughs> Are you what, sure? The, well, then why is it called a search and murder mission? <laughs> no, no. Search and rescue. Search and rescue. <laughs> Your switch is set wrong. <laughs> What they're, what they're doing is uh, you got the Sheffield Center for Robotics. They're working on programming a group of 40 robots. And, and basically just programming just plain old robots that don't really do anything. Uh, they're working on like some core programming to teach swarm behavior, which actually is pretty simple. It's, you know, turn a robot on. Robot, do you see another one of you in front of you? No? Okay. Well, then circle around until you do. As soon as you do, then you stop. And then that, in that way, like all the robots get together and then you can teach it to do things beyond that, mm. uh, because as a swarm, you know, you can teach these small robots to say, uh, carry something from one place to the other, you know, uh, or, mm-hmm. you know, get together and like push like a, like ants would do or something. Teaching then, robots friendship. What could be wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know about friendship so much as. Is or, is there another me? Okay, stalking <laughs> each, each <laughs> other. Get it? Get it. Huddle, or, or, huddle, 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 Codependence huddle. to be I, I, independent of humans. I feel lonely. I feel lonely. Oh, wow. To be a clone. Be one of the sheep. Come back Bad. here, guys. But Where now, are you going? You what? said they're they're starting out with robots that are not programmed to do anything. Yeah, basically, all they're doing is teaching them to swarm. But what is the point of having a robot that is not supposed to do? Isn't it? Wh- how do you put it together? What, what do you do with this, it? This is how you start. Like, let's figure out how to make that program great so that we can plug it into every other robot. You know, to like then swarm. We, we let the robots yeah. decide what they want. But to yeah, do. they'll be fine. They'll figure <laughs> no, right, it out. No, I get that part <laughs> the, of it. But what the I'm swarm saying. of search and murder robots. <laughs> <laughs> but the my question is, you're developing this uh, uh, swarm behavior mm-hmm. and you're plugging it into some existing robots. Mm-hmm. So what were the existing robots supposed to do before this? Oh well, I mean, I, ba- basically the the robots that they're programming this into are just robots that move. 
It was like teeny tiny robots that all they do Their is only just kind of point move. is to swarm. I mean, yeah. they're just made oh, to so swarm. they're designed. Okay. Yeah. And then once they figured I, that out, then you made gonna... it sound like someone went to all the trouble of building a purposeless robot. <laughs> like, Yay! Like, we have a robot. Right, well, that... We spent about eight million dollars on this. Um, and look it at this. Does it's nothing. Twelve feet tall and has seven arms. And <laughs> yeah. And we turn it on and it just goes into yeah. the corner with all the other robots. <laughs> oh, this is uh, great. What does it do? Oh, it's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, watch. No, see, they're they're there. Okay, there they are. This made. we made this oh. robot on the off chance that we'll come up with an idea for it later <laughs> that we'll just plug in. And the good news is we've got a bunch of them. <laughs> They're so all over the place. We're going with the swarm. All we got to do is turn them on. It could and do will... all kinds of things, but it can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the idea is you eventually be able to use this sort of programming for nanobots. Once it gets so small uh, that we can just inject them into our uh, veins, mm. uh, part of the problem is that they're so small, you can't have like a huge uh, processor on it to like, well, let's go search out uh, this cancer and destroy it. Uh-huh. But if you can teach them all like, okay, swarm. <laughs> Uh, you, you just have your like neck and strangle you from the inside. <laughs> so uh, what, what we're doing is creating a bunch of uh, tiny robots that mm-hmm. we're going to inject into ourselves yep. and uh, teach them to gang up and destroy parts of our innards. Yes. Or we well, can make them big. Uh, the military applications, you can use them for search and rescue. Or you can, Wait a uh, minute. Military applications? What? Tell me more. <laughs> What's it? Uh, you could have a bunch of swarming robots to search out uh, your 2015 Osama bin Ladens or mm. what have you. You know, mm. just search all the caves. And as soon as we find one, swarm. Wow. Um, you could use them. Or anybody fact- who's a day late in paying their taxes. <laughs> swarm. <laughs> or when do we, get, when do we start uh, arresting people for pre-crime? Is that coming soon? Uh, uh, we have a story on that coming up next right, episode, I'll, I'll, actually. I'll save my question. So if you were yeah. thinking of committing a crime, you best do too it. Too late. They're I'm not, already I'm coming not, for I'm you. Not. They're I, already I, coming I, for me. Mm. It's too late. Do you hear that knocking? <laughs> That's the swarming robots. Ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> That's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to the special guest, Ben Zelovansky. Oh, thank you, guys. It was a delight. A science delight. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. How difficult was it for you to say that it was a delight? <laughs> if you just said that at the beginning, we could have just ended this whole thing right here. Oh. It would have been way more delightful. God, uh, as the, pro- as the, the podcast progressed, I felt more of a, a moral requirement to talk about what a delight being on this <laughs> podcast was. We I made you a better human being. <laughs> Scientist. Uh, where can they find you online if they were looking for you? I am on uh, Twitter at Ben Zelovansky. That's that's the place to go. No underscores or no underscores. Ampersands. No replacing uh, your A's with fours and your E's with threes. No, you don't censor the word like the, the TV show that yeah, you're on. Yeah, it's a dash dash dash. No, I do it like in a cartoon. So it's asterisk. Uh, ampersand it should be at uh, don't trust sign. the B dash dash Zolvansky. Z- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can find us online at uh, the science jerks on Twitter, uh, the science jerks dot com or science jerks dot com. We're on Facebook. Uh, go to our website and uh, buy stuff through the Amazon link. We get a little cut of that, and it doesn't cost you anything more. Yep, no. and you can send us, uh, you can email us questions about any of the topics we talked about, or corrections if we got something wrong, which is we, rare. Uh, that it's really doesn't lot. seem likely. That happens. It, I, I don't remember it ever happening. Uh, what, about what, uh, every fifteen <laughs> seconds, we say per, something incorrect. What percentage of the Amazon purchase does the guest get? Is it a standard? Um, yeah, it's a standard flat rate. <laughs> Extremely uh, flat. Very, very flat. <laughs> <laughs> One sticker, I think, is the well, percentage. Now you're talking. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to leave here a rich man. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, that's good. I'm good. Live long and prosper. No, 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 no. Unless you just hate life. We could just, we could just trail don't off. Don't live that. Don't even. Yeah, like just, just gonna make it super anticlimactic. We'll live back, short you know. and die broke. We'll be That's back with an, another episode yeah, with yeah, Ben in a few days. You know, when you're done with that, you can just uh, tune in. What if it goes to the Nazi party? That's where most of this stuff ends up. What if it goes to someone... Most money that you get <laughs> uh, give to uh, homeless people eventually ends up in the hands of the Nazis. Someone who was just $5 short of a lethal dose of crack. <laughs> <laughs> then you're a murderer. Yeah. You see? I've, every day I feel like I'm $5 short of a lethal dose of crack. <laughs> well, you want to buy some crack?